All right, guys, so we're back for day two today at the Dallas Card Show, which is, there's Josh, all that. Feels like it's gonna be a big crowd today. It already feels that way. Yeah, and uh, so we're set up again. We're just hanging out, walking around. Lots of cool stuff. I'm actually doing a signing today. I'm gonna get a card signed by Vlad Guerrero. Why not? He's here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see what we can pick up. Looking for anything particular? Just whatever you get. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll good doubles. All right, we'll catch you guys later. So I'm here in the in the what they call the Starlight Room, which again is that kind of secondary room. There's probably three or four rooms total, I guess. But this is where all the signings are. So you've got Bob Hall of Fame football cowboy legend Bob Lilly signing right there. Then. Uh, over here is, uh, is uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. or Vlad Guerrero Sr. Sorry, I'm about to get him to sign something. He's behind the gentleman standing up. He's over there, right there. There he is. So he'll be signing here in a little bit. But yeah, they got some really good signers. Can Boyd is signing. Uh, Rick Barry, basketball Hall of Famer, is a bunch of his jerseys. So lots of great stuff in addition to the cards, which is always great. So. I'll get the Vlad signing later. All right, so I'm here with Mike, my best friend in the world, MM7 Sports Cards owner, my best friend. Yeah, we, we, we used to be friends <laughs> back in the day. And we are busting each other's chops over a gorgeous We got a card. PSA 5 are, Ted Williams and a 1.5 SGC slab. I, I mean, look at this card. Everyone watching knows that's a PSA 4 or 5. The SGC guy was drunk when he graded it, <laughs> and I'm having to pay for it. He did. So I did buy this after some back and forth. Andy was actually our moderator. He was, yeah, he arbitrated he was, a good he arbitrated thing. The yes. I'm bringing people together, guys. <laughs> That's what I do. The good thing was a mic was going to win and a mic was going to lose in that deal. And I think we both won and we both lost. I'm still sitting down because I have what you call the red ass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably a kid's station. I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I don't know about you guys, but these all seem cheap to me. Like, trout nine fives for 30 bucks. Like, you look like you're a 78. Those seem, they're all like $30. Like, if you're a trout guy, that, that seems... Like a good deal. I may have to pick up one or two of these. We'll see. Alright, so there's Vlad right there. Get ready to do the signing. We've got a Bowman rookie card and my autograph ticket. So I'm gonna walk right up. It's moving pretty quick. Come in. All right, so I am back from day two at the Dallas Card Show, and man, I had such a great time. You know, the more I get into the YouTube community, the deeper I get with friendships, it's hard to describe how much these guys mean to me. It's hard to describe how much I value their friendship, how much I value their input and in helping me buy cards, how much fun it is to hang out with them, how much fun it is to look at stuff together and randomly, oh, isn't that cool, isn't that cool, isn't that cool? Helping make deals, all that stuff is what makes this hobby so much fun. I say it all the time, I know I do, you're probably sick of me hearing me say it, but I'm gonna keep saying it because for me, that is so important. And Josh and Andy getting to stay here and us just hanging out and having so much fun and doing the table together and then doing the table with Matt uh, from the poll and hanging out with Mark, Foo3112, uh, just enhances everything, takes it to a whole nother level of awesome. The cards are great and I've got some nice ones today. But... Uh, I just want to say that before I get going into day two of the show. Uh, they're just great guys in this community, great people. And so that was so much fun doing that. Today was totally a day, by the way, super busy at the show. Crazy busy. Way, way busier than yesterday. Lots of people, lots of deals happening, lots of, lots of great stuff. Lots of traffic. 
So my idea pre-show that it might be a little bit slower, it was completely wrong. Uh, today was a complete day of randomness for me. I had one card I had seen that I was really targeting from the day before, and I got it, and I will show that. And then it was a bunch of just, oh, you know, walking around going, huh, I'll, I'll get that. Why not that? And so I will explain all of that as I get into these cards. And oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday, I'm not going to show it because it's kind of a pain to do, but I bought an entire 1964 top set minus the Hall of Famers yesterday. That too, in addition to all the other stuff. Or, I'm sorry, did I say 64? 65. I bought a 1965 top set. I don't know if I just misspoke or not, but I bought a 65 top set. That was the next top set I was going to go for and try to build. Turns out I didn't need to build it. I had seen it at Mikey Mantle's at MM7 Sports Cards up in Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago when I was up there. And we did a deal over the last couple of weeks to kind of finalize that. And I picked it up from him. Uh, I'll just show you. I got the binder, all the cards. So that's pretty much done. There's a few cards missing that he pulled that I said, hey, I don't need all the stars and, and Hall of Famers because I've already got those. And so that made the price come down significantly to where I felt like it was a great deal. And he gave me a great deal on another card today, which, well, you already saw it. Yeah, so I forgot that was a clip we did earlier. Let me show you the rest of the randomness stuff that I got, and off we will go. Hang on one second. Now to start, random pickups from Mike at the Dallas Card Show. No, I mean, <laughs> seriously, I just stuff you're going to see, you're like, what? But it was uh, a bunch of randomness, but all stuff that I love. So, yeah, let's just start going. Here we go. I did not have any graded cards of this player playing basketball. And I found a guy that had a bunch of different slabs, all low grade stuff. But I just wanted to get some cards of the GOAT, Michael Jordan. So I did. I got that. And I got this. A 1990 Fleer, classic pose, slamming the ball. Excellent mint six. I, did, I could not have cared what the grade was. I paid $15 for the pair. I mean, why not? It. I didn't have any Jordan cards, and I wanted a couple of slabs of Jordan, so I got that awesome UD Encore. The hollow foil on that is just it's pretty wicked cool, actually. So I picked that up, and the Classic 90 Fleer in a quote-unquote terrible grade, but great card, if that makes sense. I did that a lot. That's how I roll. So I got two Jordans, glad to add those. I was literally walking out and I was going through a box trying to leave and I found this for my four decade set that I needed in a near mint eight, 84 tops batting leaders. These are just becoming harder to find because no, there's no point in grading this card probably ever, but there's certainly no point at the current prices of grading to grade this card. So trying to find it if you want it for some project like me, it's becoming more and more difficult, and I paid 10 bucks for that, so got that. Then I was walking around with Fu, 3112. He bought one of these, and he said, hey, the guy has another one if you want to get it, and I said, well, yeah, at that price, I do. I, I am so high on one Soto, I can't even tell you. I just think he, out of that class of players between Tatis and Vlad Jr. even, uh, God, who else? Did Acuna, you know, all of those guys. I think Soto is kind of the one that's going to have the best career. I just think he, his skills are just sick. So I'm trying to pick up his stuff. His stuff's way down right now. And yesterday I bought a base PSA 10. And today I bought a Topps Chrome PSA 10. The guy had it marked for $250. Uh, we each bought him for, we each bought one. He had already, he bought one, he came and grabbed me and I went and bought one for $225 for a base chrome Soto PSA 10. I know Ed Wesker Griff is cheering in his chair right now that I did that. Then uh, Matt was there from Bench Clear Media, does the pull series for us. He was selling a bunch of stuff at the table. He was actually the one that bought the table and then we all chipped in to help pay for it and also be there. Uh, so it was mainly to have a place to go. I wasn't really selling a lot of stuff. I wasn't selling anything, really. 
So a couple of cards that I have dupes of that I was selling and my Bryce Harper that I'd gotten a few weeks ago, but I was there just to hang out and he had a bunch of, a bunch of great stuff. So I ended up buying this from him. I paid $20 for that. This is a, one of those sets that I really love national treasures, uh, hall of fame, love the hall of fame in the background. These are numbered to 25. Yep. 21 of 25 right there. So on card hall of famer for 20 bucks. Yes, please. And then this was the card I really wanted from him. I had to write this wrong. I did not have any autographs of this guy in my collection at all. And I felt like that was a situation that need to be, needed to be fixed. And that's Bo Jackson. This is a 2012 national treasures treasure signature materials. It is also numbered to 25 right there. Six of 25. It's a prime. The Jersey's not terribly prime. I don't really get that. It's not a patch or anything. It's just a, looks like just a swatch, but I didn't have any Bo Jackson autographs. Bo Jackson to me, if, if I had to put my money on the greatest athlete I've ever seen in, you know, watching sports, it's Bo Jackson. Just unbelievable. Two sport athlete, just Bo Jackson. <laughs> He's awesome. So I, I got a great deal. I paid 80 for that. So I paid a hundred for the pair from Matt between the Alomar and the Jackson. So really happy with that. Then I found a dealer. I, I paid $30 a piece for these. I got a 75 tops Harmon Killebrew. For my player era autos, this is Killebrew's last Topps card. And then that's JSA certified on the back. So that's good. Came with a cert too. And then this is a random Dick Perez pickup. Same seller had this. It's the puzzle card from 89 Donruss with Warren Spawn. And that is also on the back JSA certified right there. So yeah, cheap. Hall of Fame pickups, always good. This one wasn't cheap, but this next one was one that I just thought, well, I'm, why not take advantage of this? And they had Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Hall of Famer there signing. They had a bunch of great signers, Bob Lilly, and you saw the, the clips of all that. And so I had his, I got a Bowman, I bought a Bowman rookie there at the show. I paid $20 for the card and $80 for the autograph. So I'm into this card for a hundred bucks. And that, to me, it just feels like awesome. I just love that. Got to shake his hand, meet him. You saw that earlier, me going to the, to the sign, walking up to the signing. So yeah, got that. Awesome. All right. Two more pickups and we'll be done. This is another random thing. So Josh rated rookie and I were walking around and we saw two cards from what I consider to be one of the most beautiful sets, period paragraph ever. I'm going to, I need to pull this out of the plastic while I'm talking about this because it won't do it justice. And we were, we saw two cards. One was Barry Bonds and one was this one. And I, I just, we made it, we wanted to, we bundled them together with the dealer he was asking what we thought was awfully high, and we ended up getting them for what we thought was very fair and good deals. And I'll tell you what he got in a second. Josh will end up showing these on his channel, but or his anyway. I wanted to show mine. I got a, I don't have any 93 Finest Refractors in my collection, and I bought this Tony Gwynn. I love Tony Gwynn. Great player from my life, really. <laughs> My whole life I watched his whole career and that's a near mint eight the grade wasn't terribly important it was more just having this card I mean look at the the shine on this I don't think it's ever been duplicated on how beautiful these cards are and to get a Hall of Famer uh, he got Barry Bonds who will be a Hall of Famer someday which is probably the second biggest card in this set probably Griffey then Bonds, Nolan Ryan. There's some big cards, but he got the Bonds. He'll show that later. But yeah, I paid 150 for this, which I thought was, but that's totally random. I mean, that didn't fit anything other than I love baseball cards. That's, this is where, that's where that fits. 
I love all baseball cards, and this one's just classic. Love it. And then my big pickup, you guys saw it earlier, the deal getting done with MM7. But I want you to look at this card. I, I covered up the grade, right? Everybody, if you saw the clip earlier, you know what the grade is. But if you just look at the card and completely ignore the numerical grade attached to it, look, how, look at the centering. Look at the beautiful color. I mean, this is a fantastic 1954 Bowman Ted Williams. I mean, this is a card I've been looking for and hunting for a long time. It's gotten super expensive, even in low grades. You know, one guy had a two and a half for 2,500. There was a three and a half for 2,500, you know, so you can get lower grades. I paid 875, as y'all heard for this card. Uh, or maybe you didn't hear what I paid for. I can't remember what the clip has, but I paid 875 for this. And that's a lot of money for any card, but this is just such a classic card. The the f case is cracked a little right there. That doesn't terribly matter to me. I am, I mean, this is the first SGC card I've ever bought. And I think it looks great in the tux, but I, I'd prefer it in a PSA slab if I'm just being honest, but I can't get it for a price that I'm, feel, that I'm comfortable with. And so I went with this. But this is a one and a half, an SGC one and a half. And the reason it is, is up here at the top, I don't know if I can get it in the light to show, but there is a, it's almost like it's an indention in the card. You can kind of see it there. Just there, there it is a little bit. See that? Right there where the light's coming in, right above his head. There's a little bit of indention, but it in no way when you're just looking at this card, just takes away from it but that's why it's a one and a half and these are the types of gems that i look for the technical grade is largely irrelevant <coughs> excuse me i just want a nice looking card and and this fit the bill to a t for me so so glad to own this and uh yeah we will catch you guys soon that is it from the dallas show this year or not this year yeah, it's probably the last one this year end of october Hope everybody has a great Halloween, a great rest of your weekend, and don't forget to keep collecting.